Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Vertus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be showing you how you can get this player inside of your game. Now this character that I've got, you can download it from the download link in the description. It is one of the Mixamo characters and it also comes with the Pro Magic Pack which is basically going to give us the ability to rig this character that they've given us and that rig is going to continue with some animations for walking, running and it's also going to allow us to cast a couple of spells and it's really going to make the piece for our RPG game. So like I said if you want to download all these animations and stuff you can either do it from the Mixamo website or you can just download the link in the description. So everything that you need is going to be on my website which is simply vertushub.com or .co.uk. Um, once again link is in the description down below. Anyway getting started let's go ahead and bring it into our engine. It's really simple. So if you've downloaded the folder from my website for the RPG assets you should have a folder for mesh and you should also have a folder for animations. So first things first, whenever we're importing a character we're always going to start off with a mesh. So open up that mesh folder and then just grab the file here, so Eve by J Gonzalez and then what we're going to do inside of our content browser is I'm actually going to create a new folder real quick and I'm just going to call this character for now. Once I've done that I'm going to open this up and then I'm going to drag my character straight into there. Once you drag it in, you'll get a couple of settings that will pop up and that's just going to ask you a few things. Is it a skeletal mesh? Yes, import the mesh, yep. Skeleton, we don't need to select anything here. The reason why I'm not doing that is simply because we have... Um, we're not, we don't have a skeleton for this, it's a fresh brand new character and by leaving it to none it's going to create its own um, skeleton which is great. Import animations, leave this unchecked, just pretty much copy everything that I've got here. Import materials is a really really important one and it also saves us a whole bunch of time as well. Once you've done that just go ahead and press import all and give it a couple of seconds to pop in there. Once it has done that we'll work on playing around with the animations after we've checked the character. So give it a moment just a few more seconds and then it will pop up. So while it's doing that, what I'm going to get you to do is to go into the RPG Assets folder and then with that just open up your Animations folder as well. Now bear in mind my computer is being a little bit slow at the moment where it's importing this character. Um, so characters in there, that's all good. Go to your Animations folder and make sure you've got all of these animations, we'll be importing these in a second. So it's finished importing our character, so let's make sure that we've got everything that we need. We've got all the materials in there and it's all set up, our textures, and we've also got our physics asset, our skeleton, and most importantly our skeletal mesh. Go ahead and open this up and let's check the character and make sure it's all good. Your character should look exactly like this. And if we was to select some of the bones, like the right arm, or any part, we should be able to move this quite freely just using the transformation tool. So we should be able to rotate these and move them up, down, left, right, and all of that good stuff. If that is the case, let's move on to adding in our animations. So close that. And then what we're going to do is create another new folder inside of characters, and we're simply going to call this animations. The reason why I'm making this folder to separate the animations from the mesh is simply because there is so many animations in there. Um, it's just going to clutter up our content browser, so it's a little bit nice just to separate things a little bit. So, moving on, go ahead and select all of your animations in your file explorer, and then just click and drag it into your content browser, just like that. And then for the skeleton at the top, just make sure you set this to your character that you've just created. For me, that was Eve by J Gonzalez Skeleton. And so that's all good. All we're going to do is just go ahead and press import all. Now all of my all of my animations should be working with this character as soon as we get them in there. So as soon as we do have it in the engine, what we're going to do is we're going to open up that skeletal mesh again, and then using the asset browser, we should be able to try out try out some of these animations and just make sure they all work. What I'm going to do now is quickly skip the video to when all these animations are all imported. Okay, so all of our animations have just finished importing and you can see these all in the content browser at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test some of these to make sure they work. Simply open up your skeletal mesh and then this time on the right top hand corner hit animation and then when we do go ahead and press this we should be able to see all of our animations for our character. So we should have some of our crouch walking ones, we should have our, um, our spell casting ones and there shouldn't be any issues like clipping or jittering or sort of bones, well not bones, but body parts sort of clipping in between each other. To me this looks perfectly good and this is 
perfect to set up our animation blueprint and get this into our game. So having said that, what we need to do then is actually set up a animation blueprint for this character. It's really simple to do. Go to animation and then go to animation blueprint. Once you've done that, just go ahead and select your skeleton for this character again. Make sure it's the same one, Eve by J Gonzalez, and then just go ahead and press OK. And then just call this Eve underscore BP for now, and then open it up and we can start using all these animations and bringing them together. So give it a couple of seconds to load up again. And now inside of here, we are going to be introduced with the animation blueprint editor. Now it's really confusing if you do have any issues or anything like that. Just slow down the video, just follow along, um, and I'm going to try and explain this um, for those of you that are absolute beginners to it. So, when we go inside of here, we've got something called our final animation pose as part of our editor. What this is going to do, if you actually go ahead and hook up an animation into here, it's going to play that one animation. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if I go to standing idle, and then if I drag this in, and then hook it up to the result, and compile it, you're going to see we have our character just standing there and all they're going to do for now is idle. But if we go ahead and try and put something else in, like standing jump for example, I can only do one at a time. So what I need to do is pretty much tell the engine when to do certain things and the way that we're going to do that is using states. These states are going to be like idle states, walk and run state, casting states and all of that good stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this place standing idle and I'm going to create a state machine for us to put all of these states into. So right click and just type in state machine and add a new state machine in there. And then just go ahead and right click and rename this. So for this, this is just going to be eve underscore states. And then once we've done that, just drag out the result into here. And then if we compile it, it should go back to the T pose because it's got no information and there's no states in this state machine. Open it up and we're going to be creating a couple of states for this character now. So the first one that we're going to make is the idle state. So that's just standing still. It's the most easiest and least complicated one to make. So grab out our entry and then simply press add state. And then just type in idle to set up the animation, uh, sorry, the idle state. And then from there, drag out from this little ring of the idle. And then in this one, we're going to be creating a state for walking and running. So just go ahead and create that. And then once we've done that, you can see we've got these little arrows here, which are linking up everything. And this is pretty much the flow of your states where they can and can't go. So from the start, we can go into end idle. And we can also go to walk and running, but we can't go back. So let's say if they stop walking, they won't be able to go to the back to their idle state. So we simply need to drag from walking and running all the way back to idle, just like that. And that's all good. So it's starting to come to life now. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up my idle animation. It's really simple to do. So just double click on your idle. And then with that, all we're going to do is simply drag in standing idle and hook that up to the final animation pose. We're only going to have the one idle animation in here for now, so we can just hook it up as simple as this. So the next one is going to be our walk and running one. Now this one's going to be a little bit more complicated. Now because we want to use more than one animation, we need to create something called a blend space to actually generate um, or tell the engine which animation to play when and where because we've got walking, we've got running, we've got left, we've got right and we really want it to be coherent. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over to my content browser and I'm going to create an animation blend space. So click that, open that up and then just select the Eve character once again and we're going to call this Eve underscore BS and then once we've done that just go ahead and open it up. Now inside of here, this is where things are going to get slightly more complicated. So what we need to do on here is use this little graph to plot out the direction and the speed of the player. So what I'm going to do is grab my horizontal axis, which is going to be this one here at the bottom. That's going to be my direction. So I'm going to set the name for that to direction. And then for the vertical, we are going to be setting this to speed. And then using this graph, you can quite clearly see exactly what I'm looking to do. So I've got my direction at the bottom, speed at the top. So running, the running animation is going to be all the way up at the top. And then the idle is going to be all the way at the bottom. 
Now I've got to change some of these values to actually make it run in line with um, the speed and the direction of the player. Now the axes for the character defined by you know our blueprints that we've got at the moment is minus 180 by 180 and then speed is 0 to 600. Now the reason why I'm using the speed 600 is because by default our maximum movement speed is going to be 600 as part of the character movement component. Um, if you're going to be having sprinting and stuff you might want to add that in a little bit higher um, but for now if you just follow along with the series just use 600 and that is fine. So what I've got to do now is I've actually got to plot all of these animations onto this little thing here. Now to make it a little bit easier I'm going to select show animation names so that you can follow along a little bit easier. So first things first what I'm going to do is I'm going to place in my um, walking forwards. So walking forwards is going to be slap bang in the middle. Now the reason why I'm putting this in the middle is because the direction is pretty much straight forwards and because it's sort of a medium speed um, the walking is I'm just going to leave it in the middle. Whereas our running, so if we grab our run forwards in place and then drag this up at the top, this is going to now make it run when it's moving at a higher speed. So at 300 it'll be walking and then 600 it's going to be running. If we press shift and click, we have this little preview um, thing so we can see the speed difference now. So for direction, if we go to walking, you can see it walking forwards. And then if we move it all the way up to the top here at 600, you can see, see she starts to run a little bit faster and that is exactly how we want it. So moving on, what we're going to do now is add in the other ones. So what we're going to do is grab our run backwards and that is going to be the top left and the top right. And then we're going to do the same thing for walk backwards and that's going to be in the middle right and the middle left. And now, that is pretty much going to allow our p character to run backwards. Um, now, it doesn't really make sense with these being on the left and the right, but you'll see it work later on. And the next ones that we've got to add in are really simple. So the next one, standing walk left in place, is going to be on the left-hand side over here. And then right in place is going to be on the right-hand side of walk as well. So next to walking, you've got it on the left. And then next to walking, you've also got it on the right making sure that you've got the right values for those. Moving up to the top for running, we need to put running left and right in there as well. So find your standing run left, standing run right. And now if we use the little preview, as we move left or right, you can see the direction of the player move. And that's looking really good to me. That is pretty much everything for our blend space, uh, blend space. The only other thing that I wanted to do was I actually wanted to go ahead and just drop in the idles to the zero value for speed. That way, if there's any issues, it's just going to drop the idle all the way back down to zero. Oh, sorry, if it's not moving, it's just going to drop the idle down inside of here, even if it doesn't go into the idle state. So grab your standing idle and just drop it into all of these little middle pins here and that will set up your idle animation. So now if we preview it, if we go all the way down to the bottom, the character, when they're not moving, when the speed is zero, it's going to be standing still. As we move it, you can see they start to move forward slowly, slowly, until it gets to a full run for the player. Once we've done this and it all works, what we're gonna do is go ahead and save this. That is something that's really important. It can take quite a while to set up this blend space, and it would be a real shame if we were to lose any progress on that. So the next thing that we need to do now then, going back to our walk and running state, we need to drop our blend space in here. So it's really simple to do. So grab our eve underscore blend space and then just drag it into the result here. Now that is pretty much everything for our blend space. I'm going to end the video here and in tomorrow's video, we are going to be going over setting up the values for speed and direction telling the engine when they should be moving and all that good stuff, setting up the conditioning. Um, so just hold on till tomorrow's video and we will get straight into that. So once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.